Hello, my name is Dave Taylor. I'm a product manager with Temperature Equipment Corporation. Today what we're going to cover is basic electricity. We're CFM and GPM guys, and some people feel like amperages and KWs and voltages seem foreign. Well, we're going to cover things about how they're related to CFM and GPM, so you feel more comfortable with it. We're going to talk about basic electricity today. Some of the units we have to talk about are CFM, we all know what CFM is, cubic feet per minute. Uh, GPM is gallons per minute. Delta T is the entering temperature minus the leaving temperature. One watt is 3.414 BTUs. And one kilowatt is 34.14 BTUs. How is it like HVAC? Well, some basic formulas we all use. Uh, the first one is air. The BTUH is 1.08 times CFM times delta T. The 1.08 is a constant. Uh, water, it's BTUH times 500 times our gallons per minute times delta T. That gives us the load that's delivered to the space that you need to heat. With electricity, it's pretty much the same. The KW, or what the heat that gets to the space, is equal to 1.0, with the constant, times the amperage, times the volts. So the amperage is the medium that's carrying the heat to the space, just like GPM or just like CFM. And the voltage is like the delta T. The higher the voltage, the higher the delta T and the more heat. Now, how do we figure all that? Well, this is Ohm's law. And this is seems complicated. We try to put it into a wheel like this. And you can get this on the internet or you can see your TECTM, they can get it for you. But you can see that we have volts, amps, ohms, is signified as R, and watts, signified as W. Now, what we're going to do is convert these into a formula. These are law, ohms laws in formulas. And there's all sorts of things that if you want to figure out volts, you can figure out those with other, the other uh, variables. If you want to figure out amps, there's all the formulas depending on what variables you have, ohms and watts. Well, what we want to know is to figure out how much volts and amps it's going to take to get the heat loss to a space. And that's what we're going to do. We want to look at the watts. So the formula we're going to use is watts equals volts times amps. Because what we do is we start with the heat loss in the space. Now, how do we figure the heat loss in the space? Well, there are charts and tables out there. We're going to use this one. And we take the square footage of the room and we have a watts per square foot for newer homes, that's homes that were built from 1980 on, or older homes, which were built before 1980. Newer homes is 6 watts per square foot, older homes is 10 watts per square foot. So let's just pick a room, a uh, 225 square foot room. You can see for an older home, we need 2250, for a newer home we need 1350. Well, let's say we're trying to add heat in a bedroom. Uh, that's far away from the furnace. So we're going to look at the older home. That's 2,250 watts or 10 watts a square foot. That's a good starting point. Now, we're going to know, we need to know how many amps they have to feed to get that watts to that particular bedroom. Now I know this is kind of difficult to see, but you can see Power watts at the different voltages, 120 volt single phase, 208 single phase, uh, 2083 phase, all the way up to 600 volts. But we're trying to find out what the wattage we need. So I'm going to blow this up a little bit. And here we know that we needed 2,250 watts, or 2.25 kW. So here's all the different amperages. All right? this, is the, this, this is the CFM or GPM that has to go to that space through the wires to satisfy that 2,250 watts. Well, most wires, or most voltages in a residential application are 120 volt. And here we'll need 18.75, let's say 19 amps. And here's 240 volt, 9.38 amps. So now we know how much wire size we have to have to carry the amperage, that medium, to the room to get that 2.25 kW. All right, it's either 19 or 10. Now, sometimes people have wire going into the room that you can use, you can tap off of. But let's look at this. 
I had about, I needed, um, at 120 volt, I needed 16 amps, and I only got 1,920 watts to the room. Well, how much did I need for 120 volt? I needed about 19. So that's not gonna do it for us at 120 volt. I gotta look at 240 volt. 240 volt, that gives me plenty. I can get 16 amps, and we only needed nine, and I have 3,840 watts to the room. So what I'm gonna need is, if I don't have 120 in that room, I'm gonna have to pull some 240 someplace. And I'm gonna need number 12 wire, uh, two wire lead, and I'm gonna need a 20 amp and a two pole breaker. Now I wanna make sure, make sure you understand that this is for continuous load. If you've got a compressor or something that takes a lot of amperage draw to start off, you have to upsize it by at least 25%. So this is a continuous circuit. I just wanted to show you a common piece of equipment that we sell here. This is an electric unit heater. Uh, you would see this in a garage, you would see it in maybe a mechanical equipment room where they uh, can't bring in gas, uh, or maybe even a, a larger commercial space. Uh, all the units come with a mounting bracket. This is a universal mounting bracket. You can put this on the wall, on the ceiling, it's even angled so you can point it downwards. Uh, all of them come with louvers like this. Louvers are adjustable, so you can point the air down even further. Uh, this unique heating element, this coil element back there, uh, that heating element is sheathed instead of having the electric wires in the airstream. So it's a little bit more protected uh, for some um, atmosphere that isn't so good. Uh, this happens to be King Electric. Uh, we handle that brand. And I'm going to flip this around a little bit, show you some of the back. You can see the small prop fan that blows the air around. This is the control compartment, you know, along with the transformers and contactors you have. This area is where a unit mounted thermostat would be. Uh, some owners like to have the uh, thermostat unit mounted so uh, employees uh, can't adjust the uh, heat. Uh, or some like to have it, um, you know, remote mounted. Uh, some of the newer ones we have actually have electronic controls so a little uh, knob like this that so you can uh, punch up and down the temperature just like you can on thermostats with a remote control. Uh, and this is if you have a unit mounted fan speed switch, you know, that would be located right here. But those are all factory options you can get. I hope we've made you feel a little bit more comfortable today with electric heat. We've shown you how CFM and GPM relate to amperage. And next time you have a heating need, think of electric heat to supplement your hot water and gas.